welcome everyone. Uh, we'll be starting shortly. We're giving our colleagues a few more minutes to join. Uh, but welcome. Uh, this is a conversation about the, the global fund and the global fund replenishment process. Um, we have our dear friend and colleague, Linda Mafu, uh, to take us away. Welcome, Linda, and welcome, everyone. We'll be starting in a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, welcome everyone to this conversation. We will start in about one minute. Hello, everyone. Hi, Manju. Hi, everyone. So great to see everyone here. Hannah, do we have a good group to get going? Yes, definitely. We can get started. Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, I am extremely excited for this conversation today, and even more so because I get to introduce my friend and uh, someone who inspires me so very much. Uh, I am excited to introduce Linda Mafu. Uh, Linda, any chance we can see you on video for a minute? It's, it's so uh, great to have Linda here because for those who uh, may or may not know Linda in her very many hats, the one hat that we're very proud of to call her ours is that she was um, a supervisor, a host supervisor to one of our fellows a number of years ago in South Africa. And uh, as we know, once you become a fellow uh, uh, in the fellows family, you stay in the fellows family. Linda has been a civil rights, uh, I mean, uh, a civil society advocate and an activist involved in HIV activism for in South Africa for a long time before she joined the Global Fund. 
and in the global fund has several roles but in all of it has worked every day to ensure that civil society have what they need are able to navigate the process and is always willing to help us figure out how to navigate it but also strategy and so today we are having a conversation with linda um, it is a time for all of your questions about navigating the process, uh, about what's coming up in the Global Fund, about changes, uh, ask her for any advice and tips. Um, first, we're going to hear from Linda herself to give us a quick overview from her perspective, some things to watch out for as we start entering the Global Fund season. And then um, Angelo will uh, facilitate a discussion to make sure we can ask all the questions we have of Linda. So with that, again, welcome, Linda. We know you have a lot to do. We know that right now in New York, you have a really, really busy schedule. And we are so very grateful for you spending um, this hour with us. So with that, I am going to open the open the floor for Linda to get us started with a brief presentation and uh, actually I'm handing over to Angelo now to facilitate the rest of the discussion. Thanks so much Manju uh, for that introduction and uh, without further ado I'm gonna just hand over to uh, to Linda now and, and actually we are also delighted um, that uh, our colleague um, uh, is he on already? Uh, yeah, Donald Tobaiwa uh, from Zimbabwe, uh, who is on the call, is actually going to help us uh, with the. So uh, please prepare your questions. Uh, be prepared for a really, really uh, intriguing conversation because you cannot. Uh, this this room is going to be lit up because where Linda is, you're going to be lit up. So over to you, Linda, to take us away. Thank you so much. I'm going to try and keep my video off because the, the internet here is interesting. So I'm not going to say it's unstable, it's interesting. Um, <laughs> so yes, it's, it's, it's great times um, because we are mobilizing resources um, for um, supporting the national response um, and making sure that um, we're supporting HIV, TB and malaria as well as ensuring um, that we are supporting countries to strengthen their systems for health, to be able to respond to HIV, TB and malaria, as well as any other new pandemic. Um, colleagues, it's very interesting times. We are mobilizing resources at a very, um, I always, as I, when, I, when I, I see hardship, I always say interesting. So, um, it's interesting times in that um, when we walk into um, a, a donor country office, um, so the response and the discussion is about the replenishment of the global fund. However, the discussion begins with um, the conflict in, in Ukraine, um, which is quite big and, and ensuring that we resource um, the conflict in Ukraine um, the second um, topic is um, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that is causing havoc in terms of the economy of the different countries. And then the third discussion is on climate change. And lastly, um, in the last five minutes of the meeting that was supposed to be about replenishment and supporting HIV, TB and malaria, we then begin to speak about HIV, TB and malaria. So there are huge competing uh, priorities and the countries are really struggling. It's the same conversation in the implementing countries, um, implementing partners, um, there are many challenging um, issues. So um, one of the uh, issues is that, for instance, like I come from South Africa and um, in the early um, 2000, people were dying. Um, from Monday to Monday, we went to um, funerals. We, we were in a position where uh, people were dying and, and, and we could not do anything about it because we could not afford um, to pay for treatment. We could not afford 
to buy prevention um, technologies that were available at the time. Um, we could not even dream of um, saying that we have now um, saved over 54 million lives. So we had 50, 50 million lives and then we had additional more lives that were saved. So we can't, we can't, we were not in a position to even think about that. Um, and we called for a fund, um, a people's fund that would um, help us left the field that will help us um, to deal with the health inequities um, in the world um, that would help us to prevent unnecessary death. Um, and so uh, the Global Fund was born. Uh, it was called upon and led, um, the, the activism uh, was led by um, Kofi Annan who called for um, a, a people's fund that would enable yeah. us um, to ensure that people had access to, to, to treatment um, and healthcare services. Now we are at a point where we are celebrating um, saving at least um, 50 million lives. Now colleagues, the global um, need currently because we worked with the Rollback Malaria team, we worked, we worked with the Stop TB Partnership, we worked with WHO, we worked with um, UNAIDS to come to a point of saying, what is the global need for the next four years? And the global need up until 2026 is 130 billion. I want you to remember this number. Um, 130 billion is the global need for HIV, TB, and malaria, as well as responding to any new pandemics. So we have a global need of 130 billion US dollars. Out of that, the global fund is going to mobilize at least 18 billion US dollars. And I want you to remember again, the at least part, because it's very important and I will tell you why. We want um, to mobilize at least 18 billion US dollars. And also we are saying that with the 18 billion US dollars, we will be able to unlock 59 billion US dollars from domestic resources in the implementing countries. Meaning that the Global Fund is going to work with the countries around their fiscal space to ensure that they mobilize and allocate their own resources to health. We are also going to work with civil, with, uh, with um, the, the countries around their co-financing. Hi, Linda, can you hear us? Uh, Linda, can you hear us now? Uh, let's give a let's give Linda a moment. Uh, I think her internet is behaving. Can you all hear me? Yes, Angela, can hear yes, you. Can I think we've lost Linda. Right, can right, you thanks. hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, I don't know when when I broke. You were talking about uh, the 18 billion and what it's going to unlock in the countries. Yes. So yeah, yeah, my, my internet is interesting here. So um, the, the, the 18 billion will help us unlock at least 59 billion US dollars. That is based on the domestic resource mobilization and domestic resource allocation to health in the countries that we support. So we are also, um, working with some of the um, multilateral partners as well as bilateral partners to provide at least 25 billion US dollars to the countries. Now, if you look at the 130 billion and then look at the 18 billion that we were talking about, the 59 billion that we we're talking about, and the 25 billion that we we're talking about, we will still have a gap of 28 billion US dollars. That is why we keep on saying at least 18 billion because we have a gap that is an unfunded quality demand. The unfunded quality demand behind that number, it means that there are people that we are going to leave behind. There are people that are not going to have um, access to resources. 
That's the challenge we have. So we are mobilizing the 18 billion after the pledge meeting, which is going to be on the 21st of September. We will celebrate the 18 billion and start advocating for more resources because we still have an unfunded quality demand. Now, we are talking to the donor countries that have many priorities and now the queen has died. Um, and, and that's another challenge, meaning that UK is not going to announce anything at this point in time. So we, we may have those challenges. Um, and then we also have many other countries that have many priorities um, that do not really include um, HIV and HIV prevention. And so we need the advocacy of civil society partners. We need your voices, we need your drum beating, we need, we need your useful noise um, to make sure that we get HIV treatment, HIV prevention tools and, and, and support for malaria and TB at the top of the agenda. That's the challenge that we have. And it doesn't stop with the 21st of September, it continues. Um, we also need to hold our countries accountable because finding the resources can be challenging, but what is more challenging is how those resources are being utilized and how do we showcase the impact of the efficiencies around um, the use of, of these um, resources. So we need your advocacy. The Global Fund is, has been discussing and working with UNAIDS and other um, global partners in the health architecture to ensure that there are more resources that are allocated to prevention technologies. And that means we need your support as AVAC. We need your support as civil society um, in your countries as well to ensure that there are resources that are allocated, one, for the prevention technologies, two, for research and development. Because if, if those resources are not allocated um, to, to be used in all those areas, we are not going to bend the back of HIV, TB, and malaria. So we need your support. Um, so on the 21st of September, we are seeking to get the resources at the level of 18 uh, billion US dollars. The, the US government is hosting our pledge meeting, which is awesome. And it also um, has um, shown a lot of leadership around ensuring that um, we are allocated at least 6 billion. However, the conditions of the 6 billion is such that we mobilize the remaining 12 billion from other countries. So far, we have had a pledge from Germany, which is an increase by 30% from the sixth replenishment uh, pledge that they made. We have also received um, the pledge from Japan, which was also awesome because it was almost 28% um, increase from the, the sixth um, allocation. So we are still advocating and working with um, France. We are still working with um, UK. We are still working with Australia and many other um, countries. However, we also have what we call solidarity um, pledges. So the solidarity pledges are coming from our own implementing countries. So the implementing countries are coming to the table and saying, even though we don't have the money we are coming to the table because this is global solidarity. This is shared responsibility. We are allocating resources. So we have South Africa that is also increasing its own pledge. The last time South Africa uh, pledged about six, um, six, six million US dollars. However, um, through advocacy from civil society, the final pledge was 10 million US dollars. And now they are saying that they want to increase by 30%. Um, we had the same um, support from Nigeria. We had support from 23 implementing countries um, that also pledged their solidarity and honored um, their contributions, which is really awesome. Uh, and we want to continue to have that. And every cent counts um, and, and as much as every life um, counts. So we are working towards that. Um, there are many development that I would like to encourage you to work on because we have also a new strategy as the Global Fund. And in that strategy, it says communities at the center. It also says increasing 
the support from poor food prevention um, technologies. It also talks about increasing um, the support for community engagement. Now, um, it means that you have a role to play. Um, after this replenishment, it's an opportune time for you um, to, have to have conversations with us. Yes, it sounds like a baby. Um, so we, we, we want to have conversations with you on how to um, work with you, at, particularly at country level, to influence um, what is going to be developed by countries, um, because they, there is a process now, they will be working on their concept notes, they will be working on their new funding model for, um, and so we need to have your voices there. Um, you can't just support us to mobilize resources and not be part of the conversation on how to allocate and how to utilize those resources. I think I'm going to stop here and then we can we can have questions and in conversation. Is that fine? Thank you. Go ahead, Donald. Uh, okay, great. Um, th thank you so much, uh, Linda. And um, I'm excited because you can actually feel the vibe and the enthusiasm and, and you know, the, 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 the message that's coming through from Linda. Uh, are very powerful to us, and I will I will not do anything in terms of summarizing. Good to see you, my sister, uh, Linda. So we'll get into the question and answer session. I already see hands. I see Samantha, and then I see Peter. Uh, we'll take three, and then we'll have responses, and then we'll get on to the second round. Uh, Samantha, uh, go for it. Um, can you talk more about how the Global Fund pledge will be increasing domestic resources. Is that just an estimate or is that an agreement between implementing countries and the Global Fund? Thank you. Um, Peter, please uh, go for it. Thank you very much, Donald. Hi, everyone. Uh, and thank you to Linda for the presentation. Uh, yes, uh, I would. I would like uh, to 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 have more uh, uh, Linda to to elaborate more on the on the twenty eight uh, billion that uh, she talked about. That we the, the the I think she said that even after the eighteen billion uh, U.S. dollars has been raised, uh, and then the eighteen billion dollars will in a way unlock the, the, the other 59 billion. But then she talked about the $28 billion that will still be needed. Uh, so I want to understand if essentially what she's saying is that uh, the $18 billion and the 59 uh, uh, will contribute towards uh, maybe what uh, the, the countries just need to, to get started on the, on the HIV prevention, but Essentially, the countries will still need uh, to raise more resources towards uh, the global uh, okay. fund mm -hmm. money. I think that's yes, sure uh, how we'll be still. I, uh, I, I, uh, I need her to, to, to elaborate more on the 28 billion. Uh, what, what the prospects may be for, for raising that, or what uh, she is essentially saying about it, that we can go on with uh, our programs without the 28 billion or what are we saying about it? Uh, uh, thank you, Peter. I see uh, Dr. Lillian is, has a chat, a question in the chat. Uh, this is very informative, Linda, uh, brief and to the point. Is there a summary document or presentation that sums up all these key highlights shared? So I'll, I'll hand over to Linda for this uh, three questions, and then we'll get a second round of questions. Over to you, uh, Linda. Um, thank you so much. Um, so in terms of the domestic resources um, and the increase in that, we are in conversation with countries, as you know, when we do that grant making um, discussion, there is a piece on um, the co-financing. We also have a department now at the Global Fund, which is called health financing. That works directly with um, the, the countries 
One, to look at their uh, an analysis of their fiscal space, looking at where would they get the resources um, and how would they get the resources and also the importance of allocation of those resources to health. And through that um, department, we are able to unlock um, some of those resources, but also build an economic um, case when it comes to allocation of um, resources to health, because that is one of the challenges that the ministers of health were unable to have a conversation with the ministers of finance around. So we have been working with that and we are working with the African Union through the um, Africa leadership meeting that was led by um, His Excellency uh, President um, Kagame. And through that, they also have what they call a scorecard where the countries are supposed to report on their process of increasing domestic resources. So we are following a couple of pieces around that. Um, and through the, the modeling around the domestic resources, we landed at 59 billion US dollars and it still needs a lot of advocacy. So that is the piece on, on the, on the um, 59 billion US dollars. And then in terms of the, the, the unfunded quality demand, like I said at the beginning, we have a global need. The global need is 130. And that is based on the quality demand that is needed um, and, and it's costed and it's lending at 130. And then if you then do a division, you will get the 18 billion US dollars, get the 59 billion US dollars that is supposed to come from the countries themselves, 25 billion US dollars that is supposed to come from other multilateral um, partners like PEPFA, USID and others, as well as the countries themselves like Netherlands and others that are supporting um, the, the implementing countries. However, even if we get all of that, it does not fund the whole amount of 130 billion. We still have an unfunded quality demand of 28 billion. That means if even if we get the 18 billion US dollars, we will still have a gap of 28 billion US dollars. And therefore, um, the resource mobilization of 18 billion, even if on the 21st of September we lend and celebrate 18 billion. The next day as the Global Fund, we continue to mobilize resources so that we can still cover the, ex the, the existing unfunded quality demand of 28 billion, because it means that there are many people that are not going to have access to healthcare services. So that is the challenge. In terms of our um, the summary of this, definitely I will provide it. In fact, I, I planned to, to share the PowerPoint presentation and I thought it's a conversation. So we should have a conversation and I'll be sending the, the PowerPoint presentation. I just need to give you a picture of what the 18 billion will buy for us. The 18 billion US dollars will enable us to save at least 20 million lives in the next three year cycle. It will also enable us to avert at least 450 million new infections. So it's, it's very important to think about the, the prevention technologies that we need to, to advocate for uh, if we want to reach 450 million lives. Um, the third piece, about 6 billion of that 18 billion will go towards building resilient and sustainable systems for health. Um, that would be able um, to support countries to respond to HIV, TB, and malaria, as well as any other new pandemic. So pandemic preparedness is key. And I'm going to stop there. Uh, thank you, Sis Linda. Um, there is a question in the chat box. Uh, thank you so much, Linda, for your presentation. You emphasized on the importance of advocacy. What key strategies could advocates utilize to reach the government? Uh, I, I think it was meant to say to reach the governments uh, to donate, to influence them in pledging more money to bridge the 28 million gap, billion gap. Um, and then. Start. Okay. So let me take another question from Chi Lufia and from Liz, 
then you respond, then we'll take another round, if it's okay with you. Thank you, okay. Linda, for, for a wonderful presentation and well summarized. Um, I would like to, just for the sake of asking, um, is it possible that from different countries, you would like to link advocates to the key people who they can work with? Because I know sometimes uh, there could be a lot of people working on the same thing, but they're not well coordinated. So how best can you help uh, to link the advocates that are on this call uh, from different countries to the key people that have been doing work around um, the Global Fund uh, so that they can move as one voice and try, and try and see where they are and how they come in? Thank you. Thank you, Chilufia. Let's uh, have um, Liz, then we'll get responses from Cicelina. Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is Elizabeth from Kenya and Lillian has talked about sustainability. So my question to Lillian is, how does a, a sustainable health system looks like for Global Fund? Thank you and over to you. Thank you, Liz. Um, so over to you, Linda. I guess you're not getting a new name called Lillian, uh, but uh, over to you, Mrs. Yes, thank you so much. Um, so in terms of advocacy, um, there are a couple of things um, that we can work on. Um, one, because we are calling on all the implementing countries to showcase the impact of the partnership with Global Fund. So if you have community stories um, where um, you've seen the impact of the partnership of the Global Fund, we want those stories. We want to write them up. We want to visualize them. We want to do, uh, and I've been told that I should not say visualize, I should say podcast. We want to do those things, um, those social media things. We want to amplify that if there are uh, areas where you feel that the partnership of the Global Fund has made an impact, you want to show that. Richard, please can you, Richard, please can you mute your mic? Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Okay, you, yeah. Is, is that fine now? Um, so we, we want to showcase that, we want to amplify that, we want to share with the donors. So we have a platform that is called Global Fund Advocates Network. We have an Africa hub that is actually based in Kenya and in South Africa, led by Rosemary Mburu. And um, we are working with them um, to mobilize some of those voices, but also they organize a couple of things. They organize um, reaching out to embassies of the donor countries. They organize reaching out to embassies of some of the implementing countries that are influential um, in the global architecture. Um, so we work with them on that. And, and I definitely, I will work with Angela to um, introduce you to all the different different um, role pay players that we have in your different countries. Um, we also um, work with um, what we call champions. So we have some of the countries um, that the implementing countries that are our champions, including Kenya. So President Kenyatta was one of our champions, and now we may have a new um, champion in the meantime, we are supported by all the other people in, in the Department of Health and the CCM that are, that are supportive. We have South Africa as, as a champion, we have DRC as a champion, we have uh, President Kagame as a champion. Um, so Malawi is our champion as well. So we have different um, champion in the heads of, at heads of state level that we work with. And therefore you can continue um, in your own countries writing letters, um, organizing meetings, we, we work with GFAN and they can support you in doing that. Um, and then in terms of, and also we have contribution from Kenya. Kenya in the last um, replenishment, they provide, they pledged 6 million US dollars and they have honored that. So that is also um, another area of work. When the pledges happen um, on the 21st of um, September, we still have to do a lot of advocacy to convert those pledges into um, contribution so that they can be dispersed. Because if it's just pledges and it's promises, 
then um, it, it doesn't work. So we still have to do a lot of advocacy and we can work with you around that to make sure that um, the, the pledges are converted into, um, into the actual contribution. There was another question. Um, I, I can't remember the question, sorry. Um, So I've answered the question on advocacy. I've asked, answered the question on linking up people um, with the different, I think the last question from Liz, I, I can't remember, sorry, Liz. So, so you um, answered Liz. Okay, go ahead, Liz. So you've talked of a sustainable health system, and my question was, how does a sustainable health system looks like for Global Fund? Wonderful. Um, so a sustainable um, health system for Global Fund includes a couple of things. One, it includes uh, making sure that the human resources for health are covered. Um, and so we have the human beings to, to support other human beings to access healthcare services. Um, the, supply, the supply chain um, is working well. So we are able to get um, the treatment to um, Kisimu um, and in, 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 in wherever the rural community is. We are able to have a very strong um, procurement process that gets um, resources and, and equipment to where um, they are needed. Uh, we are also talking about the community systems where, because we know that some of the activities are, are done and led by communities, the community-led monitoring, um, the community-led um, treatment literacy or prevention literacy uh, that ensures that people, uh, are, there's a critical mass that understands um, some of the prevention technologies and access the treatment um, technology. So, all of the so the supply chain, there's procurement, there's human resources, um, all of the systems that enable um, a healthcare system to work for the people and, and ensures that um, there's availability of services to people. Uh, thank you so much for this round. Uh, I see a comment from Sindra uh, saying, um, Shem, um, uh, so, so the comment reads, um, strategy, uh, shame them, uh, particularly shame US government for allocating 900 uh, billion on war. Uh, so that's a comment. I see Natasha and uh, Veronica, uh, your hands are up. Uh, Natasha first, then Ver Veronica. Uh, thank you so much, Donet, and thanks, Linda, for the presentation that you have made. I have sort of two questions. And the first one, oh, my name is Natasha and I'm from Zambia. Uh, the first question is, uh, is it possible to make an amendment in terms of the allocations that have already been made of resources to other new programs uh, during the period of implementation under Global Fund? And then two, uh, also under what kind of platforms can advocates come in to influence uh, allocation of funds? Um, because I know in Zambia there's the implementation right now period is from 2021 to 2023. So during this period, is it possible for advocates to come in and you know advocate or influence for reallocation of funds? Or one has to wait until you know that implementation period is over, until when the proposals are coming in, or when such talks are happening, that's when you know um these suggestions or recommendations can, can actually be taken upon. So those are my two questions. I don't know if I was clear enough, if you took down the, the point that I was trying to raise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, Veronica, you can come in. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Donald, for, uh, for allowing me to say something. I have a, a question regarding to the, the replenishment. Uh, we have seen that this uh, this seventh replenishment has encouraged even some of the African country, some of them to plead uh, on, on the incre increase of the fund. And we have seen that in allocation of these funds, uh, more 
more fund or more money goes to those who have pleaded. But to those who have not pleaded, the money they receive is quite uh, little. So I was under impression that money been done uh, to CSOs, community, uh, different networks, and, uh, and so far, we have seen some changes. Some of the countries have even uh, increased on their pledges, but uh, we, uh, we are under impression that for those who did not uh, plead, it will create some impact uh, to the uh, implementation uh, in dealing with the three diseases, that is malaria, TB, and HIV. So uh, in order to support one another to get fairly and to, uh, to address all those challenges and gaps which are identified in different countries according to their, uh, their natures, uh, I think there is a need for us to, to sit back and see what we can do in order to support uh, everyone to access and engagement in uh in getting uh equal shares in uh the, those funds so as it can support uh countries where for those who have not yet pledged so to my worries will that be uh resolved or how will they uh, uh support those who have not pledged in this seventh replenishment thank you Thank you, thank you, Veronica. Um, I think I'll hand over to Linda uh, to respond. Then we'll take another round. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. So in terms of um, amending um, what has already been um, provided by the country um, and also in terms of the allocation, you still have an opportunity because there is a mid-term review of where things are. So you still have an opportunity to contribute to that as long as you have the evidence, you have the information and you can provide and do advocacy. Also mobilize other civil society partners and other impacted communities and to amplify what you are raising. That is very important. And you do that through the CCM, but also you do that um, through connecting with some of the Global Fund Fund Portfolio Managers. So in your country, for instance, if you know your fund portfolio manager, you can organize your civil society and write up exactly some of the key things that need to be included in the fund and include your CCM in the conversation. Don't leave your CCM behind. Um, so you can still um, have the opportunity to review um, the allocation and how the money should be spent. The second piece around the allocation, the allocation has nothing to do with your ability to contribute in the replenishment. It has nothing to do with that. It is just a solidarity pledge. And it does not have an impact whatsoever to how much the country re receives. The allocation that is, is, is um, supported by the Global Fund, it looks at the burden of um, the disease in your country, as well as your ability or inability to pay for um, your response, meaning that if, you, if the country is unable to pay for its own um, response, the Global Fund supports the country, irrespective of their contribution to the global, that is just a, a solidarity fund. So you don't, that, that does not impact on the country. So there is no unfairness in that. So for instance, if we, let's say, if um, Kenya is contributing so much and um, Zambia is not contributing, that does not have an impact at all. Um, we just provide the allocation based on the burden of the disease in the country. Um, so that is, that is very important. And then in terms of, again, having communities at the center, the strategy of the Global Fund, the new strategy articulates that um, the, any response that the Global Fund is looking at has to have communities at the center, meaning that as civil society partners, we all need to create the critical mass of civil society and communities that are able to then, um, one, hold the government accountable 
hold the Global Fund accountable because if you don't hold us accountable for what we say and what we promise, then um, we are not doing good enough um, work around that. So hold the government accountable, hold Global Fund accountable, provide the evidence that you have on the ground to make sure that um, you, you are articulating the needs of your community because you, you are equipped to be able to advocate for the needs in your communities. So provide that. Um, at the Global Fund, you have two people that are um, leading the, the two departments that are focusing on civil society. You have the Community Rights and Gender led by Kate Thompson. And again, you can have a conversation with Kate and I can link you up with Kate. And you have me um, that is leading the political and civil society advocacy department, which means that again, you can have a conversation. You have an, two internal people in that are focal points and we work with other people in our department that can support you to convey some of these key areas that you will identify in your communities. I, I hope that that helps. Thank you, thank you, Linda. Uh, I just see the questions are coming in, it's getting exciting in water and I'm seeing more hands, but just to also say to the, uh, to the Ever Fellows that uh, campus uh, um, EVAC, uh, uh, is, 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 is facilitating what is called a campus project uh, that's working in Zimbabwe, uh, Malawi, and Tanzania. So through campus, we managed to engage the community rights and gender uh, department, and they have facilitated a couple of webinars. Isha is here on the call and can share some of the presentations as well as the recordings we have had. Uh, a presentation on the Global Fund new strategy that was purely tailored to the uh, campus family. Um, and I know some of the fellows that are here participated in that, but we can equally reshare that. Uh, there are other couple of webinars uh, that, that uh, the, the TA, Sierra GTA, that was uh, supported through IANASO also came through. And a couple of other webinars that have been tailored uh, for the uh, campus uh, you know, ever um, uh, specific, you know, discussions uh, where the request was to simplify because most of the times there was participation in the uh, regional communication and coordination platform through IANASO. But then uh, Campus Family felt that, or the EVAC Family felt that it was highly, te uh, highly technical and we wanted a bit of a uh, lower level. So those are the tailored uh, conversations that we are having with uh, CRG. So uh, I think Angelo, uh, uh, Isha will continue to share the links as and when uh, the CRIG webinars uh, are coming our way. I thought I should just um, share uh, that. Uh, so I see uh, Jean uh, is a hand up and then we'll take uh, three more questions that are on the chat box. Over to you, uh, Baron. Uh, hi, thank you. Um, I wanted to let folks know that we have a blog coming out <clears throat> Uh, hopefully on Thursday, that goes into a lot of the advocacy that um, ABAC has been doing with our partners, um, with a partner group that the policy team works with, and Sam is on here if she wants to talk more about that. But heads up for that blog, which will have also some, some um, kind of key messages in it. And in addition, I wanted to share that I put a link in the chat to our uh, Protecting Global Gains uh, site, which features many of the stories, Linda, that you mentioned. Not every single story on there is about um, innovations and impact accomplished with, with support from the Global Fund, but many, many, many of them are, and they're short and they're concise, and you can mine them. There might be some there from the countries that you work in most closely. Um, so do check out here and I it's in the chat and I can repost it if that would be helpful but a lot of those stories of impact are in there and Linda if they're helpful to you um very glad to point them out to you I think that was it great uh, thanks thanks so much so uh, there is the link I can see the link on in the chat please access that link then there are a couple of questions thanks Linda for the nice presentation I'm Elijah uh, Sandram executive director for Center and, and Youth and Welfare Organization in Malawi. 
my question is you talked about you talked about that one of the priorities for 18 billion US dollars is prevention technology. Uh, what strategy are you going to use for its effectiveness, bearing in mind technology gaps we have, especially in Africa? Uh, so that's the first question. Second question for, from Samantha is to confirm that the pledging conference will be on the 21st. Uh, so confirmation, uh, whether it's uh, on the 21st. And then another question, my name is Edward Piri. How is identification of vendors for Global Fund suppliers done under the Global Fund? Is we experience Abbott as a sole supplier which has played a negative role in terms of viral load uh, turnaround time uh, as we heavily rely on one vendor other than having more than one and it becomes worse when force develops, especially for gene expert machines. Uh, is it the procurement? Is the procurement decided by Global Fund or Ministry of Health? Uh, that's Malawi. Uh, so uh, that's uh, those are the other questions. Uh, the other ones are just acknowledgement. Uh, over to you, Linda. Thank you. Um, I, I did not get the, the first question. I, I think it was also Malawi. Um, I think you were reading it from the chat and I tried to go to the chat. My, my, uh, my technology skills are interesting. Um, so in the meantime, let me, let me respond to some of the questions and then you can, you can summarize the other one for me. So in terms of the procurement um, process, um, they, we, for Malawi, we have um, the fund portfolio manager called Ocean. Um, he's new, he started there, I think six months or so ago. I came to Malawi with him because the president of Malawi is also one of our champions um, for the replenishment. Um, and we had a conversation, Ocean and the minister of health are trying to problem solve around the procurement process. They had identified that as a challenge. Um, they are working together. We also have a platform within the Global Fund called WAMBO. Um, and in that platform, it allows countries to come together and, um, and procure whatever resources um, they need in a way that they also receive um, um, a reduction in terms of the amount that they pay um, for, for what they need. So um, we are trying to work with Malawi around that in terms of how they can use that procurement platform. Um, but also if there are other challenges, um, there's, there's a discussion that is ongoing and you can hear more from our fund portfolio manager. You can send me an email and I'll try to connect you with the fund portfolio manager so that he can help you to, to, you know, to, he can respond to some of your questions and also help you to manage and monitor the, the conversations in your country as well. So definitely we are looking at that. Definitely we are supporting countries um, to ensure that they can bulk buy um, using different platforms, including Wambo, which is um, supported by the Global Fund. Um, in terms of the decision on which um, company to use, use the global fund is guided by the country because it's a country-led process. However, when there are challenges like the ones that you have identified, the global fund continues to have a problem solving conversation with the country. So that is what is happening. That is what I'm aware of um, in terms of Malawi. So what was the other question? So the other question was um, given the fact that the 18 billion is focusing among other things on prevention technologies, uh, what strategy are you going to use to ensure its effectiveness given the effect that Africa has technological gaps? Um, I, I think that's one of the roles that civil society plays um, to ensure that we are on the right track and we're doing the right thing because it's based on your experiences at the ground level. 
Um, and also based on, I, I always say, for instance, I'm, I'm not a technology person. Um, however, within the Global Fund, um, the, those kinds of discussions are happening. You can work through the CRG or the Community Rights and Gender uh, platform. I'm, I'm mainly focusing on the resource mobilization, finding the resources and getting the resources to the Global Fund. Uh, however, there is the implementation piece where you need to have your voice, which is the community rights and gender platform, um, as well as having conversations with your fund portfolio managers and also having conversations with your country coordinating a mechanism. If you are struggling with accessing your country coordinating mechanism, let us know because in your region, you have what we call the community rights and gender platform, which is currently hosted by IANASO. And you can work with them um, to access your CCM. You can work with them to have good conversations with your CCM to make sure that the prevention technologies are included um, in that. In, at the International Aid Conference, um, some of the activists, had a conversation with UNAID um, about the ring, for instance, and saying that we, 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 the, the ring has been um, approved. However, the countries are not allocating resources to buy the ring, show us the money. And they had the conversation with Winnie at the UN at, at, at the International Aid Conference. They did not have the conversation with Peter Ascend, who is the CEO of the Global Fund, Executive Director of the Global Fund, where the money comes from. So my, my um, activism um, to you would be after the replenishment, those that are advocating for the ring, they need to set up their conversation with Peter. And you can do that through me. Have the conversation with Peter and say, how is the Global Fund going to allocate resources for the ring? for instance. So be very specific, be very clear, knock at the doors, um, open the doors. And, and, and yeah, as much as I'm Global Fund, I'm also an activist. Um, yeah, bring the chair when there is no chair um, in, in the boardroom for a conversation about the prevention technologies. Make people listen. Thank you, thank you. Uh are powerful and, and as advocates, we need to be knocking on these doors, we need to be pushing. Uh, Linda, there is a, a, again, the question around the a confirmation of the 21st as, uh, as, as the day uh, for, 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 the, for the replenishment. Is it still on the 21st? And then we'll have one last question from Chiluthia. Uh, we are running out of time, but I see that's the last hand. Yeah, so the, the pledge meeting, the pledge conference is on the 21st. Now, originally it was going to be on the 19th. However, because of the funeral of the queen, it's been changed to the 21st of September. So it is on the 21st of September. Thank you. Uh, Chilufia, you are your, your last person. Thank you. So Linda, uh, maybe I might have missed you the meeting with Peter. Uh, regarding the funding, when do you suggest we could have, uh, could be a perfect time for us to hold that meeting so that I can relate to my uh, group, we, we get, we get hands-on on how we move forward with the uh, uh, money for the department ring. I'll ask for that meeting before the 1st of December, because after the 1st of December, after the World AIDS Day, I know. Uh, we are all out. Um, so ask for that meeting before the 1st of, of, of December, because also um, from January onwards, the conversations are at country level. And if you have not had that conversation on the importance and, and also you want evidence um, of the investment in, in, the, um, in the prevention technologies, if you don't have that conversation as early as you can before the 1st of um, December, uh, it would be a bit hard. That is me wearing the hat. That's me wearing the hat of an activist. <laughs> Indeed, and a passionate one for that matter. 
Um, uh, uh, thank you so much, colleagues, for uh, the rich discussions. I think you know the discussions could go on and on, but I think the the, the take home message to us is as uh, you know as as fellows and as, as as colleagues and advocates in the civil society, uh, there is need for civil society advocacy to mobilize for these resources. You heard that we the need is 130 billion. That's the global need. Uh, the focus around the replenishment is for mobilization of at least 18 billion. Uh, but at the same time, we also need to push for that unlocking of the 59 billion from the domestic resources uh, co-financing. And I'm happy to say some of the campus partners in Zimbabwe, Malawi, in Tanzania have a domestic resource mobilization campaign. Uh, you know, that's that's also pushing for domestic resource mobilization and it will equally go a long way in assisting. Uh, so again, support from multilateral and bilateral donors um, uh, to the tune of 25 billion, but most importantly, the 28 billion gap uh, that is uh, the unfunded quality demand. This is where we need to continue to share our voices. I know on the GFUN uh, website, uh, they have an option where you then can send your pictures, you send uh, your messages, so again, we need to link up with the uh, GFAN network and uh, Linda has promised that uh, the uh, liaise with um, uh, Angelo uh, so that all these uh, contacts can be shared. Uh, I think for the Zimbabwe, Malawi and Tanzania, we did share uh, some of the GFAN's networks, um, contacts rather, and we've also shared the links where GFAN uh, we're having uh, webinars. Uh, colleagues, uh, uh, allow me to thank uh, Linda, but also allow me to hand over to An Angelo uh, for closing remarks. Thank you, uh, and let's advocate and let's make noise. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you so, so much uh, for your leadership, uh, Donald. Um, uh, before I, I give us a, a closing, uh, Linda, do you have a last uh, to the group, and then um, I, I will wrap us up? Yes. So thank you, thank you so much. And, and as you walk to wherever, um, think of three chairs um, in the room. Um, the three chairs are representing the number of lives that we want to save, which is um, the 20 million lives. Um, we want to avert on the second chair, we want to avert at least 450 million new infections in that age group. There's, a, there's, a, there's young women and girls between the ages of 15 and 24. Think about that because those are human beings um, that need to make sure that they don't have um, um, HIV, they are not affected by TB or malaria. Uh, they are young babies under the age of five. So on that chair, of averting new infection, please think about that. Um, on the last chair, um, it's about building our health system so that they don't um, fall apart when there are new pandemics and we, we know that um, COVID-19 is not the last one. So think about those three chairs and why um, we want to do this. Um, and we have one option, um, and I usually say three sometimes. We have three options when we go to the replenishment getting the 18 billion, that's the first option. Second option, getting the 18 billion. <laughs> Third option, getting the 18 billion. So thank you so much. And, and please keep on um, highlighting this. Thank you so much, Linda. Always powerful, always inspiring. Um, uh, always, um, uh, so we really appreciate your time. We know it's such a, a busy time for you. Um, we know that this is not the, the last conversation um, and we really uh, appreciate you opening, not just yourself up, but your colleague in the community right and gender space as well. Um, we will be following up uh, 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 with everyone who has participated. Um, if you can, if you don't think we have your contact information, put your email in the chat before you log off. I think we have everybody, but just put your email in the chat uh, so that we'll be uh, sure to send you the recording of this call. We will also be sending you a number of resources uh, ones that Linda has talked about, how to connect with the, the Global Fund Advocates Network. Uh, we'll be sharing with you. Uh, there have been some uh, resources shared in, in, the, in the chat from my colleague, Jean, and uh, my colleague, um, Samantha, and Isha. Uh, we'll be also sending you contact information for uh, 
being uh, her colleague in the community right and gender and a number of other things that um, uh, we know uh, have been going on. So please do give us your your, your email if we don't have it already. Um, I think you closed us out, out well, three chairs. Uh, let's get, you know, let's save lives. Let's save are people from new infections at 450 million and let's build our health systems you've been such a, a vibrant audience uh we thank you for for making the time today linda we are indebted to you and we really wish you the very best uh the 21st is coming up um uh in in, in a few days is we'll see you in New York. Uh, some of uh, some of us will be there, and we'll be not just cheering you, but we're going to start the advocacy right now because it matters. Uh, and uh, you will hear our voices. Uh, please uh, be in touch. Uh, and, and thank you again. Good morning uh, and good afternoon uh, to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, bye.